This program is rated G and is suitable for general audiences. Children must be so excited for Christmas. They are. Abby and I were really hoping you'd come for Christmas dinner. The kids are dying to see you. Now, I appreciate the offer, and I would love to see the children. I'm on duty. If anything changes, I'll let you know. <laughs> Courier is entering the market. Got him. Thank you. They're using the charity as a cash drop. Okay. I'll stay with the courier. Packaging on the move. Transport, 30 seconds. It's split up. You take the van, I'll take the package. Subject is approaching Oxford. Mission to intercept. Stand by. She dropped the package. I need an answer. Arrest authority granted. Confirmed. Security service! Stop! Excellent job, Officer Champion. No, I lost her. She won't get far. We're working on her doing her now. Good work. Perfect. The bomb squad cleared the package. Old school tradecraft. It's a microdot. Nobody's used these since the Cold War. This is bad. As bad as it gets. The microdot contains security profiles for Kensington Palace, schematics, names of security detail, alarm code, shift changes. Only someone on the inside could access this information. It presents an immediate threat to the royal family. Princess Rose, eldest daughter of His Majesty the King, first in line to the throne. Prince Edward, husband to Princess Rose, father to Princess Elle and Prince Robert. Second and third in line to the throne, respectively. Prince Colin, younger brother to Princess Rose, fourth in line to the throne. Colin does not reside at Kensington, however, he visits frequently and oversees His Majesty's Christmas charity on behalf of the family. The threat and the charity are somehow connected. I'm declaring this crisis top secret. We need our own people in Kensington ASAP. There are two immediate openings in the staff we can take advantage of. There's Protection Officer and Royal Nanny. Royal Nanny? You're suggesting an undercover? An undercover will provide an extra layer of protection for the royals and serve as an intelligence source to identify the security breach. The family will be outraged if this gets out. They'll claim we were spying on them. Better outraged than the alternative. So. Officer Champion, you'll go undercover as the royal nanny. Officer Wallace, you'll be added to the palace security detail to accompany and assist. Yes, sir. Uh, with all due respect, sir, I do not think I'm the best fit for this assignment. Explain yourself. I grew up in a children's home. I was never adopted. I never had a family of my own. I don't know the first thing about looking after children. I barely had a childhood of my own. Posing as a nanny in such a high-profile environment seems like a non-starter. Given the urgency of the situation, you are the only one who can do it. Need I remind you of the oath you took to serve king and country? No, sir. I'll do my best. Good. I'll place a phone call to the headmistress of Devonshire Academy to assist with your cover. Can she be trusted? Absolutely. Lansbury is one of our most valued assets. Devonshire Academy, founded in 1902. In their 120 years of proud history, they have trained thousands of the best, most respected nannies in the world. 
Current headmaster, Miss Juliet Lansbury, has personally handpicked the caretakers of the royal children for the last 30 years. Right. Let's swap. You go stand in training and uh, I'll work security detail. <laughs> Not on your life. You're qualified. You have kids. I don't even know if I want kids or if I like them. Abby holds the front line with the kids. I'm only back up. You make it sound like blue fair. It is. Play nice. Try and make friends. Why do you think they call Miss Lands very scary problems? I have no idea. But I suspect you'll find out soon enough. everyone apparently scary puppets miss lansbury save the pleasantries i was read in by dg taylor right it takes four years of concentrated study and a year's service as a probationary nanny for me to even consider placing someone in a royal household we have 24 hours do you have any Child care skills? No. Do you have younger siblings? No. Do you have friends with children? Oh, uh, my partner has kids. Romantic partner? Work partner. And do you ever sit for these children? No. But I was a child myself once. To be a successful nanny, one must be passionate about children. This is just not a teachable skill. I'm afraid there's simply nothing I can do for you. Good day. Oh, uh, no, um, Miss Lansbury. I have no doubt you are the best of the best in your field, but I too am the best of the best in my field, and for better or for worse, I might be the only thing standing in the way of the immediate threat to the future of the British Empire. I swore an oath to protect, to protect king and country. An oath I am willing to give my life for, but I need your help to keep that oath in service to the crown. You're very direct, sincere, and uncomplicated. All admirable qualities. The only way you have the slightest chance of becoming possible as a nanny in the time that we have is for me to personally oversee your training. Hmm. Chop, chop. Come on, then. A nanny is well-groomed, organized, efficient, but flexible. She always smiles, always remains calm, always nurtures with love. She is properly prepared for any situation. A nanny will do whatever is necessary to stop an attack on her charge. Threats come in all shapes and sizes. Your response must be measured promptly and balanced accordingly. This is the perfect protection. You see, it does not draw attention, it does not provoke, and yet it increases the range and power you have against even the strongest foes. The canopy acts as a distraction and a shield against the foe. And it buys you those precious seconds to measure your response. Every nanny likes to plan for rain. Might even save your life. And the life of your charge. Did you spend time in security service? Oh, that's classified. Let common sense be your guide. At the end of the day, a nanny allows children to be children because she knows in her heart love always triumphs in the end. Do you really believe that? About love? I must do. I wrote it. Page 84, third paragraph. <laughs> Given adequate time, I could have made an excellent nanny out of you. Given just 24 hours, 
You're as prepared as I could ever have made you. I would like to escort you to Kensington and provide you with the proper introductions. This is probably going to be the undoing of my reputation. But if it allows you to protect the royal family from harm, so be it. I was thinking that I might be old enough to meet you without a man. Really? What about you, Robert? I was right. I think we're both old enough to do without one. Hmm, I see. Perhaps we could meet her anyway. Give her a chance? I'd hate to put someone out of a job, especially during the holidays. And who knows? She might surprise us. I mean, maybe people even like her. Well, there's a thought. Come on. How are you, Juliet? Very well, ma'am. Might I introduce Miss Carter? So nice to meet you. Highness. Miss Carter comes highly recommended by me. Welcome to the palace. These are my little darlings, Elle and Robert, your highnesses. Pleased to meet you. We look forward to thriving under your care. Okay. <laughs> Claire, this is my assistant, Olivia. She's going to help you get settled in. Please, follow me. I'll escort you to your quarters. Do you think this one will stick? I think she'll prove to be the nanny you need right now. I share this as a kindness. I'm pretty sure no one informed you, but the children are prone to mischief. What sort of mischief? Pranks, mostly. More often than not, they're harmless. Some of them have sent a nanny or two packing. Well, I assure you I'm no shrinking violet. Mm -hmm. They all say that at first. Here you are. Thank you. I'm inside. Welcome back. Any red flags? No, so far so good. But I'll be in touch. you're both here. I believe you left a few things behind. She's a tricky one. I'm going to need reinforcements. Uncle, Uncle Colin! Colin! What's the emergency? It's the new nanny. Another one? Well, what's she done? She foiled every one of our welcome pranks. So? She's a bit tougher than the others, is she? Well, I suppose we'll just have to come up with something absolutely foolproof, won't we? Come on. <laughs> ah, the old bucket on the door trick, it never fails. Hello there. Your Highness, I'm Miss Carter, the new nanny. Oh. Uh, hello. Uh, welcome. Um, the children were quite eager for me to meet you. Oh, well, it's lovely of you to make the time. I think you'll find I'm quite fond of my niece and nephew, and I take great interest in anyone charged with their care. As you should be. Children, let's leave <laughs> to allow Miss Carter to settle in. <laughs> Aren't you forgetting something? What's that? <laughs> Well played. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. How are you getting on? The children went out of their way to make me feel welcome. Really? Mm. I love my children with all my heart, but they can be spirited, to say the least. No, I found them 
absolutely delightful. Oh, I don't think I believe you. Alas, have a good evening. There we all are. <laughs> what have you done to yourself? Oh, um, our uh, cooking lesson got a bit out of hand. Oh, really? So, how do we like Claire so far? It's too soon to tell if we like her just yet. But we don't dislike her. Colin? She's clever. Too clever. Well, at least that's the start. This could be a Christmas miracle. It's already set in motion. My darlings, I hate to be the bearer of bad news this morning, but... Father won't be home for Christmas. We need him more than the Royal Air Force. He'll be home after the New Year, and we can celebrate Christmas with him then. But it won't be Christmas, it will be just another day. I know. I'm so sorry, darling. I, I wish there was something I could do. I got a school project I could use your help with, Mum. I'd be delighted. When's it due? End of the week. It should only take a few hours. Let's schedule some time. I'm sorry. I just don't see how it's possible, ma'am. We're overextended as it is, and then we'll be travelling. We must be able to squeeze a few hours out of somewhere. I'll look at the schedule, see if I can move something, but... I'll just ask the tutor. No, it's not that I don't want to help, Robert. Pardon the interruption, but the car is ready for us. Let's pick this up tonight, okay? Uh, we have an engagement. We won't be home until late. I was sorry to hear your father won't be here for Christmas. I know what it's like to miss one's family, especially around the holiday. This is Officer Wallace. He'll be our security for the next few weeks. Good morning, children. <sighs> Off to a running start, I see. This was not my doing. <laughs> it wasn't, I swear. Not entirely. Why the umbrella? There isn't a cloud in the sky. Oh, well, I'm learning all the best plans for you. <laughs> Have a good day. We'll see you after school. Barnes needs us to come in. Amanda Young, you served together in the SAS. What are you planning? It's only a matter of time before we have Young in custody. And it will go easier on you if you give her up now. Put an end to it willingly. Michael Ford and Amanda Young, both ex-military. Young's been surveilling the princess and the children for some time. I can't be sure if we've delayed whatever it is that she's planning or hastened it. Do we have his phone? He managed to ditch it before we took him into custody. And do we have anything on the van driver? Employed by the transport company, contracted with the Christmas charity. Does Young work for the Christmas charity? We're looking into it. It's staffed primarily by volunteers. There are very few people actually in their employ, and volunteer records were spotted at best. Right. Let's retrace Ford's steps, see if we can't find his phone. 
Have you uh, met him yet? We've crossed paths. He was named England's most eligible bachelor by the Times. Why do you know that? Abby told me. Doesn't every woman want to find their Prince Charming? He's not so much for Prince Charming, more than like a prince of pranks. Let's go find Ford's phone. Hello. Hi. Do you have a lost land? We do. What did you lose? I think I dropped my phone here yesterday. Oh, uh, we did have a phone that turned up. Is, is it? <gasps> oh my goodness, yes, thank you. Thank you. That could belong to anyone. No, it is, trust me. How can you be so sure? Elementary, my dear Wallace. I'm a criminal. I'm about to be taken into custody. I drop my phone in the Christmas lot and come back to recover it or get it from the lost and found. We're headed to Frogmore House. Colin's residence. Has there been a change of plans? Heightened security protocols. Delaying our travel orders until the last minute prevents leaks. How was school today? Have either of you given any thought to what you want for Christmas? I bet you both love getting socks. Perhaps laundry soap, dental floss, shoelaces, bowling balls, a bag of tweezers, toenail clippings. A bag of toenail clippings? Ew, who would possibly want a bag of toenail clippings for Christmas? Well, I suspect absolutely no one anywhere who ever lived. I was just trying to get you both to break your vow of silence. Well played. You're not like all the other nannies, are you? I most certainly am not. And I intend to take that as a compliment you did not intend it to be. Hello, children. Welcome to Frogmore. I'm prized foreign security man. Thank you. Oh, hi. Oh, come, here. Uh, come on in. Thank you, Nanny. You will not be needed for the rest of the afternoon. Uh, I'm on duty. I must remain with the children at all times. There's no service you can provide my niece and nephew over the next few hours that I cannot perform diligently, and your presence will only impose upon our privacy. <laughs> I'm going to need to clear that with Princess Rose. Oh, by all means, feel free. And after my sister has told you exactly what I've just told you, you can remain outside until we're finished. Many. I see you've made another fast friend among the royals. That was my doing. Wallace, what's going on? Something triggered the silent alarm in the kitchen. I'm on my way. I'm afraid you've caught me. If it's not too much to ask, could we keep this between us? Stand down. All clear. False alarm. What's all this? Someone triggered the silent alarm, ma'am. What silent alarm? Hyped and security measures were installed today. Why was I not informed? Miss Morgan should have briefed you. At the top of my list for the morning. I am so sorry. I think this is all my fault. I came down to make a snack and I must have set off the alarm. What's your name, officer? Uh, Wallace, ma'am. Officer Wallace. From here on out, I wish to be briefed directly on matters of security. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. I'm not sure of it. Oh, you wish to be brief right now? Yes, please. Very well. <clears throat> We've been made aware of a credible threat against you and the children. We've responded with heightened security measures and additional security detail. Should I be concerned? Is this threat more credible than most? We take all threats against the Crown seriously. For now, allow us to do the worrying for you, ma'am. 
We are very good at our job and we are well trained. And we are dedicated to keeping you and your family safe. Very well. Thank you, Wallace. I think we've had enough excitement for one evening. Everyone should make their way back to bed. Sweet dreams to all. Claire, stay behind, would you? Oh, uh, of course. Thank you for covering. It means a lot. It's my pleasure. Coco? Delicious. It's a family recipe, handed down from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. You'll come to find the palace is a special place to be at Christmas time. How are you getting on? Oh, uh, well, I, I think, why, what have you heard? Oh, well, I'm, I'm not one to spread palace gossip. All I will say is you really seem to be holding your own. Fair enough. You know, I wish I could say the same with Edward away and had to take on more than my fair share of royal duties. Um, add to that the state of heightened security. Admittedly, I'm struggling. Gosh, I feel so guilty even saying that out loud. No. I have so much help and, and so much to be grateful for. It troubles me when protocol dictates that I spend more time in the company of my loyal subjects than, than with my own children. And here I am trying to make up for it in the middle of the night with packed lunches. It's... I don't know. It's absurd, isn't it? No. No. It's wonderful. As Miss Lansbury would say if she were here. Your children just want to know that you're engaged and present in their lives. So if pack lunches is how you do that, then so be it. Thank you. That does actually make me feel slightly less terrible. <laughs> Cheers. I think we can make that work. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert, we've managed to make time for me to help with your project on Thursday night. Al, we're working on scheduling a video call with your father. I'm afraid it's a bit tricky. I keep running into military protocol restricting non-military use of the secure satellite during deployment. Well, keep trying. I have faith in you. <laughs> Who's responsible for this? I will get to the bottom of this if it's the last thing I do. This is Wallace. We need another vehicle ASAP. Did you do this on your own? No, I thought maybe you did. Thank you for being a good speed. How did you manage to put so many ornaments? Oh, I'm only as prepared for any situation. Speaking of, when you served in the RAF, how difficult was it for you to schedule a video call with someone? Difficult? Not impossible. Requires a lot of legwork. Depends mostly on scheduling an available time on the Sikor satellite. And bending their rule or two. Could you see about scheduling a call with the family and Edward? I'll look into it. So, have you sacked that annoyingly clever new nanny yet? I'm afraid Claire may be with us for the duration. What could possibly make you say that? See for yourself. <laughs> Outstanding! Well, the children have certainly outdone themselves. It wasn't the children. It was Claire. What? No. No, I don't believe that. It's true. She made the effort to win them over. And it seems to have worked. They thought it was the funniest thing they'd ever seen. She comes across as so prim and proper. Well, there's clearly more to her than meets the eye. I know she's only been with us a short time, but I feel as if I can confide in her. Are you sure that's wise? You have been wrong before. I'm only looking out for you. I know you are. It's sweet. 
I can't quite explain why. Call it intuition, if you will, but something tells me Claire has all our best interests at heart. That's very good, Robert. He's getting better. I'm so sorry to interrupt. I've managed to surprise, but we only have a few more minutes with this guest satellite. Come here, Robert. Father! Hello, my darlings. I'm told I'm missed at home. Terribly. Where are you? I'm not allowed to say. It's not important. Tell me everything that's going on at home. Well, Robert's been practicing his violin. He's been working so Let's hard. Let's give him a privacy shower. You've been brilliant, haven't you? You're overstepping your duties. I was just trying to do something nice for the family. Oh, sorry, and you call was not as difficult as you made it out to be. Rose protocol exists to be followed. We can't wait to see you. Mm -hmm. I miss you so much. How's it going out there? Could you look into Olivia for me? See what you find. It's just something I don't trust about her. Okay. Thank you for the lovely surprise. I just pulled a few strings with Wallace's help. Thank you, Wallace. My pleasure, Mum. We're so accustomed to things being asked of us. It's rare when someone presents us with such a selfless and thoughtful kindness. Have a good day. You were right. They found something on that phone. Young used her access through the charity to get a little too close for comfort to the royals. I need you to extend the scope of your watch to Prince Colin. Are we looking at him as a suspect or a target? You must be open to any possibilities. History teaches us that even the best of men would commit unspeakable acts to sit upon the throne. me impressed. No, really. Princess Rose does nothing but sing your praises. Your instincts are very good. You just continue to follow them. I could use your instincts in um, a delicate matter. Do you think Colin is capable of harming his family? You think he's in on it? <laughs> Don't waste your time. He adores his sister, and he loves those children as if they were his own. But even if it meant wearing the crown. The crown is not something Colin aspires to. Our prime suspect has gotten close to Colin in the charity, so I've been ordered to include him in my watch. The only problem is he's not my biggest fan. In fact, he's banned me from the residence when the children are visiting. Is there any way I can smooth things over? Is very good. If Colin is not involved, he might be a target. I can't protect him if I can't get near him. In that case, I know exactly what you need to do. Look who it is. Hello. Thank you, Nanny. Your services will not be required. I'm invoking the Lansbury Nanny protocol. A Lansbury nanny must always be within arm's reach of her children while on duty. If you interfere with performance of said duties, I will be forced to inform Miss Lansbury herself. And you will have to deal with her directly and um, in person. Scary poppins. As I was saying before you interrupted me, you're welcome to join us. However, your entry is conditional. On what? on proving that you can have fun. Challenge accepted. Welcome to my home. I love 
with the Christmas decor. I keep it up year round. Hmm? Every day is Christmas at Uncle Collins. Are they being serious? They're just teasing you. <laughs> it looks like Santa's workshop in here. I think it's important that we be hands-on in our charity work. So we wrap as many of the gifts as we can ourselves. I didn't know the children were involved in the charity. It's their first year. They aren't exactly thrilled about it, but that's because they have yet to learn that hard work builds character. <laughs> At first glance, I didn't take you for a Christmas cheerleader. No? no? Perhaps we're both worthy of a second glance. With her? Yeah. Really? Yeah, we really do need a fourth. Sorry, a fourth for what? All right, and go. Uh, it's shoe laces. Do, doing your laces. Um, your da dancing. Um, uh, uh, ice skating. Ice skating. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Robert. Three, two, one, go. Big giant. You're so strong. You're full of muscles. You're so strong. You're carrying a ho ho. Oh, oh, your father Christmas. Your father Christmas. Yeah. Is that it? No, there's more. Sorry, no, no. Why are you yelling at me? Because I'm naughty. I've been naughty. Sorry. I didn't, is there more? Santa Claus is coming to town. He's got, uh, what, uh... Naughty list. Naughty Didn't I say that? And go. Okay. Giant nanny bag. No, this is not bags. your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, help that help that. Father help Christmas. Christmas. No. <laughs> the the is Toys. We should get a point for that. We have to consult the judge. The judge will allow it. That makes us do nothing. <laughs> <sighs> you better catch up. You're quite competitive. What? You fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, love, um, flies, um, <laughs> mistletoe. Yes, yes, mistletoe. Well done. <clears throat> That's game. We trounced you. Oh. The girls win. Well, the children seem to have taken quite a liking to you. Not something that I've witnessed with previous nannies. And I admit, you do know how to have fun. Uh, thank you. What do you say? Should we induct Claire into the Royal Fun Club? The Royal Fun Club? You're in the headquarters. Okay. It's a place where there's no royal protocol, only good fun and games. It's a place where royal children can be children. We need to have a proper ceremony. Yes. yes. Uh, fetch me my sword. Hmm? Uh, thank you. Uh, please take... Oh, my, my shield. Yes. Thank you. Uh, please take a knee. Ms. Carter... I dub thee Dame oh. Carter. Oh, Dame. <laughs> Rise, Dame Carter, Order of the Royal Fun Club. Thank you, thank you, one and all, thank you. How long have you been involved in the Christmas charity? Since I was about Robert's age. Well, I think it's a very worthwhile endeavour. I'm glad you feel that way. How would you feel about volunteering for us tomorrow while the children are at school? I'd love to. Wonderful. Well done, Robert. Great, thank you for putting those together. So you're going to bring those over to the... Uh, to the van, just over there. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello again. Hello again. This is quite the operation. Well, I'm glad you're impressed. Are you ready to get to work? Absolutely. Can I ask you something? Certainly. Why do you put so much effort into a charity that, um, that you don't really have to? Oh, I think what you're trying to say is, Colin, why don't you let the staff handle the day today while you work on your polo game? That, it's a tad more delicate than I was going to put it, but, um, essentially, yes. Well, 
I suppose it's selfish, really. Growing up as a royal, as I'm sure you can imagine, I was lavished with all sorts of extravagant gifts at Christmas time, and it didn't take long for the novelty to wear off. But through the charity, I've discovered that giving gifts brings me much more joy than any gift I've ever received, no matter how grand. Ah, James Wilder, richest man in England. Trying to get him to donate is like trying to pull teeth from someone who has no teeth. James, welcome. We start taking requests from children's houses in October. I like to think of us as being in the business of Christmas wish fulfillment. To call it business would mean it was profitable. The idea is to acquire a gift for each and every child who participates, so they have something to look forward to for the holidays, the exact thing they ask for. Well, I feel my money would be better served elsewhere. What can I do to convince you? I can tell you firsthand the difference a Christmas charity can make in a child's life. Please, enlighten me. I grew up in a children's home. Christmas charity was a constant we could rely on. It made Christmas special. It was something to look forward to despite not being able to spend it with our families. I would rather establish programs to help the children overcome their circumstances than provide them with a luxury for one day. I understand that, but a, a toy is not a luxury. It's, it's a hope and joy. It reminds us that the world cares, and you, you can't assign a value to that in a ledger because it's, it's priceless. The joy receiving a gift on Christmas Day can give a child, can empower them to take on even life's most difficult of circumstances. Where did you find this ringer, Colin? Claire is nanny to my niece and nephew. You're the nanny? Yes. Uh, what if you bought one toy for one child? See how it made you feel. If it, if it brought you joy, maybe you could buy more next year. I will personally donate a hundred pounds if, if you agree to match my donation. Uh, how many children does two hundred pounds provide for? That would secure gifts for four children. Four. Four children who will have a much happier Christmas because of you. Come on, don't you believe that a genuine act of kindness around the holidays can fill a child's world with hope? How many gifts short are you of making your quota? Oh, roughly a thousand. I'll cover what remains. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you, truly. This will make a tremendous difference in the lives of so many children. It was a pleasure to meet you, Claire. Pleasure was all mine, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. I have been after him for ages. Yeah. And you know, I think he took sinister delight in turning me down year after year. I don't know how to thank you. You are not like the other nannies. <laughs> The children. I the children. You, I need to get the children. You, yes, you should. Right now. Oh. Yeah, okay. of course. Goodbye. We were hoping you might take us Christmas shopping. We want to buy a gift for Mother. We'd like it to be a surprise. Absolutely. What were you thinking? My main concern is being recognised by any royal watchers and causing a scene. Maybe you can shop for them. No, the point of this is that they want to do it themselves. Claire is right. We wanted to pick out a gift for her together. I'll call in the backup detail. We have the store locked down for 30 minutes. Plenty of time. Do you have any idea what you want to get your mother? It's difficult to shop for her. She gets so many gifts all year round, not just for Christmas. Mm, that's a tough one. What about getting your mum something you can experience together? Does she like puzzles? She does. She told us how much she enjoyed them. 
when she was our age. These will look like so much fun. How about these marbles? These. Hmm. Now, since your mother seems to be the woman who has everything in regards to gifts, how about we get her the world and everything in it? Brilliant. I love it. I don't think we need it gift wrapped. Sort of professionals in that department. Come on. We want both children. Surprised to see you here tonight. The children invited me. It's a welcome surprise. <laughs> uh, shall we? Yes. Let's go make a Christmas wish. A Christmas wishing fountain. Who needs a coin? Me. <laughs> Thank you. What? My wish is to have Father home in time for Christmas. That's my wish too. Maybe if we all make the same wish, you'll have a better chance of coming true. Well, in that case, I'll add mine to the cause. On the count of three. Three, two, one, make a wish. Aren't you going to make your wish? What did you wish for? If I tell you, it might not come true. Okay. You've gone from being dismissive to taking more than a passing interest in Claire. I take great interest in anyone charged with the care of my niece and nephew. Do you like her? Well, absolutely. Claire's proven to be wonderful with the children. I'm glad to see you've come around. <laughs> I'm sorry to have to do this to you, Robert, but I won't be able to help your project tonight. But you promised. I know. I'm so sorry, darling. Grandfather needs Uncle Colin and I to fill in last minute. He still isn't feeling very well. It's rubbish, isn't it? I know. All the travel arrangements have been made. You'll be flying out of Heathrow. Thank you. But we can still have fun before we go, though, can't we? How about a pancake? To go with the chocolate milk. Or should Thank I? you. Are we able to ground a flight moving out of Heathrow this evening? Do I want to know why? It's a matter of domestic security. Only DG Taylor can give that order, but um, I'll put in the request. Thank you. Okay. Yes! Oh! Oh! oh. 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 Close. 
Uh. So this must be what they meant by reindeer games. Our plane was grounded with mechanical issues. Uh, come along, Elle. As soon as I change, we will all work together on Robert's project. Come play with us first. We have work to do. Please. Pretty please. Just one game. One game. But you have to be the reindeer. I think Claire is doing a terribly good job of being the reindeer. Hello again. Hello again. Let's all play. Oh, shall we? Well, I do think that it's my sworn duty as a member of the Royal Fun Club. Yes. Ah. Oh, OK. Go! Not even close. <laughs> Here. Oh. What are you aiming for my face? <laughs> Whoa! Yes! Yeah! It's so good! Oh! Hi! All of Christmas. Naughty! <laughs> oh! <laughs> well, I stand corrected. I believe that my sister is the superior reindeer. I'm sure it's all good practice for wearing a crown one day. Oh. Uh, Claire, you can take the rest of the evening off. Colin, would you care to join us? No, I think I'll make my way home. As you wish. Say good night, children. Night. Good night. Good night. 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 Well, it seems we both unexpectedly have the evening off. If you're interested, I could give you a guided tour of the palace gardens. But Christmas displays, uh, Christmas light displays, quite spectacular this time of year. Yes, no, I, I like that. Thank you. Good. I grew up here, you know. Still feels like home. It's difficult for me to feel at home anywhere. Curse of being an orphan. Never really sure you're on solid footing, no matter where you stand. You were never adopted? No. I'm sorry, that must have been difficult. No, it, it's all right. <laughs> I didn't grow up in a Dickens novel. Everything turned out all right in the end. Seems to me as though my sister is rapidly coming to treat you as if you're part of the family. The children as well. You know, I owe you an apology. Um, regrettably, our introduction was not my finest hour. My actions were childish, and you, quite rightfully, uh, put me in my place. Apology accepted. I admit, you did look absolutely ridiculous covered in spaghetti, and I loved it. <laughs> You're really good with the children. They look up to you. Have you given any thought to starting a family of your own? I'd like to think my heart is open to it. Although I, I do have trouble trusting anyone from outside of the family. You and I, I think, are like two sides of the same coin. Growing up without a family, I find it difficult to trust anyone other than myself. Well, perhaps we might both be brave enough to take a chance on trusting each other. Sir, I need you to come with me immediately. Why? What's happened? C.G. Taylor of MI7 has requested a face-to-face -to, -face to brief you on a security matter. Uh, what, uh Right now? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Price. Does it have to be right now? Yes, sir. Claire, I'm sorry. Apparently I need to cut our outing short. I completely understand. Good night. Good night. Good night. Has there been any development in the case? I don't have any more information than you do. Amanda Young. She volunteers for our charity. 
We believe she poses an immediate threat to Princess Rose and the children, possibly even yourself. I've received countless security threats over the years. Young has a military background and was in possession of the security protocols for Kensington. Only someone within the trusted inner circle of the royal family could obtain this information, and she's been surveilling your sister and the children for quite some time. This isn't a security briefing, it's an interrogation. It looks that way. So they've been thoroughly vetted. The vetting process only works if they've been convicted of a crime, not if they're planning one. What more can you tell us? She was a hard worker. She only joined our efforts this year. I honestly don't know anything else about this woman. Perhaps you could take a step back from the charity this year, postpone the involvement of the children. The charity does not function without my involvement. Stepping back is not an option. I will, however, yield to Rose in all matters concerning the children. Now, gentlemen, my sincere hope is that you are both very good at your jobs, and this will be the last time we ever need to speak on this matter. Your Highness. I just don't believe Colin is capable of doing anything to put a family in danger. Don't fall prey to the Royals' charms. I need you to remain professionally dispassionate on this assignment. You must be willing to go where the evidence leads you. Yes, sir. Can we use Ford's mobile device to map his route to the charity drop? Maybe catch him on CCTV. Take some time? But yes. Well... Exactly what we're looking for. I want to find out where that package he was carrying came from. Perhaps it would be best if you and the children kept a low profile. And until the threat is contained, cancel the Christmas party. Nonsense. I won't hear of it. I want my children to have a somewhat normal existence. And I refuse to allow our lives to be guided by fear. Price, what's your professional opinion? I assure you, sir, with the heightened security protocols, the palace is the most secure place in the country at this moment. Good. Hear that? Good. I'll consider the matter settled. to collect them all. I want to sample one of everything to see what I like best. Thank you. <laughs> Ooh, yum. Yeah. Come here. <laughs> what are you doing out here? To be honest, this is my least favorite part of the charity business. Being in the spotlight, I would much rather spend the evening with all of you. Well, perhaps we could all go down together. No, no. Save yourselves. My fate is inevitable. Yeah. I just wanted to say hello before the evening got started. Hello. What's all this? Uh, this is your party, Colin. You need to actually attend? On one condition. I would like Claire to attend as well as my guest. Lovely. I'm all for it. That is very nice. But what about the children? I'll call on the night nanny a little early. Okay. Uh, I'm happy to lend you a gown if you need it. Thank you. But I think I might have something for just such an occasion. Splendid. You know, I, I must confess, all our lives do seem to be a bit brighter with you in it. I'm grateful. All right, let's go. Chin up. <clears throat> Off we pop. Your Highness, good evening. Your Highness. Thank you for coming. How have you been, madam? Thank you.
Uh, excuse me. Yes, your you look stunning as always. You've hardly seen me in anything but my uniform. I stand by my statement. Oh, thank you for coming. Hello, hello. Good to hello. see you. This is Claire. Hello. Lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for being here. Hello. Lovely evening. Good to see, Good to see you. Yes, May I have a word? Just, yeah, yeah, go ahead, please. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Yes, of course. No, no, no I'm, I'm quite interested. I think it's a very... I thought I might find you here tonight. You seem to be getting on better than I could have expected. Being with the children has... Well, out something in me, I... I didn't even know it was there. You see, I was the older kid, always looking after and protecting the younger children at the children's home. Perhaps that's why I went to the line of work that I did. You may be lying about what you do, but you're not lying about who you are. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Miss Lansbury. Merry Christmas, dear boy. I need to thank you. You have sent us a true gift in Claire. She has exceeded even my greatest expectations for her service. As always, it's a pleasure to see you. Now, uh, if you don't mind excusing us, there's something I need to show Claire. By all means. <laughs> Where are you taking me? It's a surprise. I've never been in this room before. This is where I keep some of the presents so Robert and Elle don't find them before Christmas morning. Oh, it's so beautiful. Every year I try to create a different display and then I give Robert and Elle a Christmas tree ornament. On Christmas Eve we all gather together in the living room and put up all the decorations they've collected over the years. I've been doing it since they were born, so I suppose it's a family tradition now. It's very thoughtful. It's nothing much, just special memories from the year. No, those are the things that matter the most. From the heart, then, they're timeless and priceless. That's the idea. Rose would like the children to have a humble upbringing, and so I... Well, I try to encourage them to appreciate the simple things in life. And just to be grateful for, for having each other. The love of a family is very special indeed. I'm blessed to have you. Thank you for saying that. But truly, I am the lucky one. Should we what? Go um, to the ball. The ball. Right. We should go back to the ball. Back to the ball then. We used the recovered phone to reverse engineer the courier's route to the charity kiosk. The package containing the microdot originated from Colin? We can't assume Colin passed along the security info. He would have access to it. What does Ford have to say? He's still not talking. No, Colin is not the bad guy. How can you be certain? Because I've spent time with him. And believe me, I have spent time with some pretty unsavory characters in this line of work. And Colin stands above them all. Would you trust him with your life? I would, yes. That would be a mistake. I warned you against falling prey to the royal's charms. Sir... If you feel my integrity has been compromised, perhaps you should remove me from this case. The only way through this is forward. You are still the best asset we have in the game. You've managed to get close to a family no outsider should be able to get close to.
I grew up here. In this exact home? Yeah. Once I left, I never thought I'd be back. It's sort of like being visited by the ghost of Christmas past. Oh. Well, that's awkward. Because I am the ghost of Christmas presents. <laughs> Now, why don't we all open our gifts together on the count of three? Ready? One, two, three. Happy Christmas! champion, not Carter. I'm with security service. We covered a credible threat against you and the children and deemed it best to place me here undercover as an added layer of protection for just such an occasion. Thank you for protecting my children. I'm sorry to tell you this, but, but they took Colin. What can be done to bring him home safely? I'll oh, stand. You are relieved of your assignment. I'll take it from here. Sir, if, if it's all right, I'd like to stay here and see this through to the You're end. You're relieved of the assignment. That's an order. I, I'm sorry. Who exactly are you? D.G. Taylor, am I My sorry? first priority at this moment is tending to my children. The only person in this room I trust right now is Claire. Everyone else needs to leave need immediately. To, but we need to brief you on the situation. Officer Champion will brief me on anything I need to be briefed on. Is that understood? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I promise you, I will do everything in my power to bring Colin home safely. I know you will. I owe you one. This is what we train for. The day we hope never comes. Something just doesn't fit, does it? I don't follow. Young knew who I was. She recognized you from the market? No. No, she called me by my real name. Not my alias. Only someone inside Tem's house could have given it to her. Exactly. Yeah. Officer Price is missing after the exchange. Seems he was taken as well. Morris needs us to come in immediately. We traced Prince Colin's secure phone. It led us right back here, where this package was delivered addressed to you. It's been cleared. It's safe to open. Prince Colin's secure phone is inside. Officer Champion. Hello, Officer Champion. 
children are safe. I thank you for that. These not-so-lovely people have a list of demands for my safe return. I would tell them to bugger off. You'll find the list in a file on my phone. I'm going to get you out of this. I promise. Thank you, Claire. They want the Courier Ford released, along with the drive containing 50 million crypto. I'll telephone the PM, see how he wants to proceed. But shouldn't this be up to the family? The family has no say in this whatsoever. This is a matter of state now. I don't like how Dale is handling this. There's something about it that doesn't fit. Oh, you don't get to be the head of the security service by winning a popularity contest. We caught a red flag on Olivia Morgan's financial records. Maybe connected, maybe not. I knew there was something about her I didn't trust. Let's bring her in, see what she knows. Mm -hmm. okay. Ms. Morgan, it's come to my attention that you had some financial difficulties that were recently resolved by a series of large cash transfers. Financial issues makes them the prime target for coercion from malevolent and outside sources. Are you saying you think I'm involved with Colin's abduction? You had access to all the security protocols. You had access to my itinerary the day of. The funds came from the mirror. What's happening? I was selling them gossip about the royal family. I'm not a kidnapper. They were particularly interested in a budding relationship between Prince Colin and the royal nanny. My role at the palace is classified. Any information you divulge going forward will be considered an act of treason punishable by ten years in prison. What's this? A letter of termination from Princess Rose. Effective immediately. The PM has ordered a national emergency and convened Cobra. As of this moment, we've been ordered to stand down. Sir, the PM is making a grave mistake. It's his mistake to make. By the time the experts and the crisis planners and the politicians all get up to speed, it will be too late. Young has been one step ahead of us this entire time. It's as if someone in Thames House is behind this entire operation. Your feelings for the Prince are blinding you. The evidence is plausible enough to point to him as the mastermind behind this entire endeavour. By getting himself kidnapped. His plan to take the children failed. He improvised. This is personal for you. Do you have something against him, against the family, against the royals in general? You are out of line, officer. No, sir, I am in line. Because you keep trying to take this piece of the puzzle that simply doesn't fit and force it into something. You are suspended from active duty. Turn in your credentials and pray that I don't have you decommissioned. Suspended. It's not the best way to begin Christmas. If an investigation hits a dead end, you have to go back to the beginning. That dead end may not be as dead as you think. Price is in on it. Young and Ford served with him in the SAS. I'm sorry, how do you know all this? I have eyes and ears everywhere. No. We shouldn't give this to him. There's not much going on in this city that I don't know about. My sources tell me Ford and Young were former MI7. How could we have missed that? They were decommissioned. And their involvement in the security service was wiped off the record. So they became ghost agents for off-book missions. Yes, rather like something right out of a Christmas carol, isn't it? But Taylor must be behind it. Why? 
The word is that the powers that be were cutting the MI7 funding, even considering absorbing it into a newly formed joint security service. Create a national crisis, save the day. It does prove how essential you are. Precisely. Now, I'm counting on you to bring my dear boy back home. Your dear boy? I was Colin's nanny back in the day. Well, who do you think gave me the nickname Scary Poppins? <laughs> He's no longer a child, but one never stops looking out for the people one cares for. <laughs> This had better be good. Colin, security detail officer Price. He's not missing. He's in on it. And if my sources are correct, Colin is inside. I'd say that's pretty good. Well, they're preparing to release forward with the ransom, so we better be quick. I bet my life on it. What's the plan? Are you just going to go down the chimney? Like Santa Claus? <laughs> <laughs> smart about this and do it my way. Wait a minute. No. Nothing like Christmas Eve takeaway. Wonderful. Hungry. Thank you. I'm in. There's somebody coming your way. told me about yourself true or was it all a cover story no i only lie to you about what i do not who i am <laughs> i trust you stay behind me where is he what where is he come on he can't be gone Lansbury and Annie always plans for rain. All good, boys. I've got it. You are quite amazing. Mrs. Lansbury would be proud. <laughs> What's the meaning of this? It's over, sir. We know you're behind it all attempting to frame Prince Colin. It might have worked had Officer Champion not protected the children. Everything I did was for the good of the service. I had to prove that we are essential to the safety of the country. It was the only way. That may be what you believe, but you can never do right by doing wrong. You'll see. It's the job. It changes you. I think it just makes you more of who you are. Uncle Colin. 
I'm missing too. No, Uncle Colin. <laughs> Colin. <laughs> oh, it's so good to see you. Oh, oh you're crushing me. <laughs> Thank you for bringing him home. It's my pleasure. And you know, we actually brought home a straggler from the North Pole. Ho, ho, ho. Happy Christmas, one and all. Father, you're here! Uh, oh. How did you pull this off? The abduction triggered a military safety protocol, so Edward was relieved of active duty immediately. Yet the Christmas wish come true. <laughs> what did you wish for by the fountain? Um, to spend Christmas here with you and your family. Hello. Yes, of course. She's right here. Just a moment. For you. Thank you. Claire Champion. Yes, Your, your Majesty. No, I'd, I'd love to. No, absolutely. Thank you. The king just invited me to spend Christmas at Sandringham. Well, that's highly unusual. Father's not usually one to invite non-family members. This is quite an unusual break in royal protocol. Claire is family. And if my brother's as smart as he thinks he is, he'll make it official. Sooner than later. Yes! <laughs> Hello again. Hello again. I guess Miss Lansbury was right. Love does triumph over all. <laughs> <laughs> 